Hello guys and welcome to episode 21 of my Total War 3 Kingdoms 8 Princes playthrough playing as Sir Ma Leong on very hard difficulty. Today we're continuing after vassalizing Ruan Shen and we're going to be hopefully vassalizing Sir Ma Chai at some point and also Song Wei here in the future. I'm not sure we're going to get Sir Ma Chai vassalized because we're going to have a lengthy period where we can't attack him. By the way, let's just uh, go through the rest of the armies, go through the uh, commanderies and see what we can do. So we're just going to be moving good old Sir Ma Zhu here towards Anping. I've got a lot of my armies set up so that if the Jin Empire ends up at war with us again, we're ready to go this time around. So he's just going to head down there. We have good old Sir Ma Bang. He's heading towards the Changsha trade port. And we already have Sir Ma Chao here. This is our elite army with Sema Yu. He's going to go straight towards Chengsha when he gets the chance. It might actually be worth moving him onto the water here. So that when we declare, we can just walk up to Chengsha and take it like almost immediately. We're going to give uh, Chengsha to Bianbing, probably. And uh, we're going to give Mao Ren uh, Lingling. I think that's how we're going to do it. We'll see. Either way, uh, we've got another army over here. This one's coming down the coast, uh, following up this army, actually, uh, that may as well just continue down. And this is going to be the settlement that we need to attack Tong An, but I think I'm going to attack that settlement with this guy, Chai Jun. Uh, he can attack Tong An, and we'll have this army of Zhu Chong come all the way down to here, to He Pu. I think that would be the best way to do it. And then we can push back from there and we can give the settlements in Hipu to Gujen. Uh, I think that's probably the best bet. All right, we have 160k cash. Uh, let's go to Nanyang and spend that. I think this would be the best to upgrade. I don't know if they've updated that or we just have like enough reduction in construction costs that it costs nothing. That's ridiculous. We don't have much income from Silk, so we may as well go for Trade Influence there. It's going to take one turn to upgrade that. And this is going to take five turns, but only cost 419. I think I'm probably better off building this first. That's only going to take one turn. And a Yang Zhu. Well, may as well upgrade this as well. We don't need the Spy one, right? No. Just go to try to trade influence so that trade influence goes up. And that way, uh, we will make more money from our trade. I think our trade influence is really high right now for the position we're in. That's fantastic. Let's just go into diplomacy. Uh, we have eight out of nine. Uh, there's a trade agreement to be made somewhere. The Jin Empire. Will they trade with us? Minus 54? Excuse me? That's not a maybe. Bam. <laughs> that's crazy. Right, we don't want another spy, so that's everything done. Uh, the only other thing we could pet potentially do is give money to our vassals. We have a few vassals that don't really like us very much. Uh, like Fang Guan and Bian Bing. We could probably send them some money. So let's try doing that. Because we have 160k, right? So we'll see how much we need to send to them in order to increase our attitude with them. Currently we're minus 18 with Beyond Being. I don't like the color. If that's only minus 18. No, it looked like it was worse because of like the orangey red color that they've got there. Anyway, we'll make them a payment. Uh, that's not going to have any effect. Let's go up to like 5,000 and work it down from there. So that's plus 14, which is good see how little we need to give him. Okay, is it like five? When it's like under five, I guess it could be like 5.2. I guess we'll test it on another person as well, but we give him 3,929. That's going to give an attitude consequence of plus 14. May your fortunes multiply. Can we do that again, actually? Be worth trying if we can do it multiple times, right? What's it currently at now? It's definitely changed. Current attitude is minus ten, trending towards plus fifteen. See if we can do it again. 
Go back to 5,000 and then tune it down. Yeah, it's definitely 5 because it was on 5 then and it was giving us the extra plus 15 co attitude consequence. Alright, well, we'll give him that much because I'm not going to affect that. That's great. Okay, so that's going to sort out our problems of beyond being. It's going to go up to plus 30 now, which is good. It may be worth doing that once more with him because Greetings, he's not exactly liking us too much. We just do that and then I click it down a few times. There we go. That'll do. That works on top, right? Yeah, plus 45. <laughs> That's really good. I actually kind of like this, the fact that you can give gifts to your vassals in order to keep them happy. I think that's what shall we discuss? a fair system. Uh, Fang Guan doesn't like us very much. We'll do it with him as well. I'm going to assume it's the same thing where we just give them over plus five's worth. Yeah, it's the same thing. Alright, so we'll send him a few mind. bits and pieces. How can we help you? We have so much money that this is just nothing to us, really. Your offer shows a clear mind. Apologies, though. This isn't the most exciting Welcome gameplay in the world, but it's management that needs to be done so that when we annex other vassals, we don't have people like randomly declaring war on us. That's going to be another plus 45 there, which is good. Uh, anyone else who needs a little bit of a boost? Uh, Ruan Shen obviously doesn't like us. Do we have since we only just took him over. But I might send him a little bit of money just to boost that. Well, we really don't have to give him much. <laughs> 5.1. Alright. The 2,000. Our patience is thin. I'll just drop that down to 2,000 again. There we go. Boom. I'm not going to do too much more. I'll do it one more time and then we'll leave it at that for now. If I really wanted a min max, we could probably just send him loads more to make him really happy with us straight away, but we're convincing him that we are a good overlord right now. Like that barely put a dent in our money. <laughs> That's great. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the next turn. Yeah, what's the point in having all this money if we can't use it anyway? Oh, Jin Empire is busy running around in our land again. Hopefully, that won't a be a continued always needs allies. thing, because otherwise then when we end up running at war with them again, they are going to attack the nearby settlements. Huang Xin is requesting that we both declare war on Song Wei. I don't think we can do that yet, so we're just going to reject for now. Your decision. Well, the other thing we can do, of course, is when we declare war on someone, is call everybody in. That generally makes our vassals happy. Two creative traits. Nice. So Ma Sui and Tan Ping Lui. Uh, so Ma Zhu and uh, Sir Malian got honest. Oh wow. That's a really nice trait for Sir Malian. And also that one's really nice for Sir Maju actually. Because that gives uh, extra trade influence faction wide. And uh, this gives uh, minus 5% corruption faction wide. Wow. <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, that was a couple of perfect traits to pick up. Alright, what about this? They are rivals. Okay. And that's fine. Alright, loads of buildings complete. Wait, did I just... Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought I'd accidentally, like, clicked off or something and removed this bottom panel, but I just clicked off a settlement. Uh, we'll go through our armies again. We're not going to have that many armies to move soon because they're all going to be in encamp stance waiting for the war with the Jin Empire. Uh, in this case, we're probably just going to move up next to Yu Zheng. Don't think we can attack them anytime soon, and I'm pretty sure we can't attack Song Wei yet. If we put him into normal stance, give the attack order, issue declaration. Four more turns until we can do that without becoming even more untrustworthy. Our reliability rating at the moment is absolutely trash. 
Okay, let's uh, bring him further down. Quite simply, just getting into position to attack our good old Song or Sima Ai here. That's all we're doing. Preparing for a big old attack. All right, is he in range to attack this element? He'd be just out of range. That's kind of tragic. <laughs> I guess it's fine. I was hoping that he'd be able to attack this in one turn and attack this in one turn with this guy. And we can put him on the water here and then just have him attack Changsha. Raid port whilst this army goes for the Changsha regional city. I do kind of find it funny how the regional city has a worse garrison than the trade port. Look at that. <laughs> I always find that funny. These minor settlements sometimes have crazy garrisons. Right, let's keep pushing up our trade influence anyway. We can do the same here. Trade's giving us quite a lot of money, I think. Not that we need more money right now, but yeah. Me as well. Build that up first. Uh, let's do that. It's only going to take one turn. Just building all of the buildings that take one turn, first of all. And uh, the other thing that I always forget is we can do instant construction on stuff in order to boost through buildings, which honestly we could do very easily because I have so much money. Like here, for example, say we want the, what was it, the Grand Tea House? We want the Tea Parlor next. I mean, we may as well just rush that, right? And then we go, oh, upgrade, boom. Oh, upgrade, boom. <laughs> yeah, we can just do that, that's fine. Oh, look at that, 2,900. <laughs> it's like, doesn't cost us anything, it's just so stupid. Well, it does, obviously it costs us some money, but we're making 30k. Why? Uh, I guess I could do that throughout. <laughs> Although these only take one turn, so that'd be like a waste of money. But we could do it here, for example. Although that's only one turn as well. <laughs> like our construction cost is so low that it's not even worth rushing stuff. Damn. I mean, we could upgrade the settlement quickly. That's fine. I'm gonna use up some more food. We have 90 spare food at the moment, so we may as well use it. What would I build in this position? Well, that's income from industry, that's master lacquer artisans. That's income from commerce, I guess. And we got the Confucian temple for the extra income from all sources. So we could potentially go for the marketplace here. That'd probably be best bet. Unless I want to push even more income from industry. What's the income like here? 2.3k from industry, 1.4 from commerce. Yeah, I think we go for commerce, because that's going to increase our trade as well. Let's just uh, build that quick and upgrade it a few times. Alright, <laughs> brilliant. Yeah, that's pretty ridiculous how we can do that with all our spare money. I feel like if we do do that, then we're going to have nothing to click on. <laughs> like every turn. <laughs> we could just spend all our money doing that now and just max out all our settlements. <laughs> uh, it's just got to the point where we're like so ridiculously far ahead. Oh well, we still have stuff to do. I still want to get the ultimate victory done. Not sure we'd have all of our settlements at max level though. We wouldn't have enough food for that. Because at max level, the Imperial City level, takes 46 food. There's no way we have enough for that. Alright, Semanduam has been born. And Semajong and Semasu, nice. I just sworn. People in Merit we don't really care about anymore. Like we're not really looking for any more characters unless my characters die at this point because we have more or less all the armies I want. And yeah, I have all of the administrators I need and that and I don't need another spy. I guess we could recruit for, for a spy, but yeah, like I already said, it's kind of pointless. Don't need one. Yeah. 
Yep, just keep upgrading this stuff. Nearly all maxed out. It just costs no money to build stuff. <laughs> oh dear, some places it does, but for example here it's like zero cost in one turn to build stuff. <laughs> it's just it's just so ridiculous. Okay. Alright, a couple of people I guess have leveled up. MRG, we'll bridge go down here. So that he can be an administrator or have like potentially good things going on. Uh, assignments that is. Continue over to Composure in case we ever need to use her to replace a strategist. Alright, back to good old Samaju. Alright, he's gonna come up to the border. Them in camp stance. We have this army that needs to. I don't think we can do this. Yeah, we've got eight turns until we can do that, so. We'll move up and encamp. This army is very close. Uh, we'll jump on water, I think. Would probably be the best bet. That way we can just land and attack that in one turn. So we are also waiting for this army to get down the coast. This one's still moving across as well. So we have a few more turns before we need to do anything. This army isn't moving. Actually, how long? Yeah, we've only got, what, seven turns until we get max spiritual alignment. It actually removes the 20% corruption from all our provinces. So in places where we have, like, administrators, that's going to go down a lot. And we do have space for two more assignments. Hmm. Alright. Uh, what assignments can we have? We got surplus markets. That's interesting. And industrial exploitation. That's minus reserves. There's income from industry and income from commerce. You can stack it with other ones, which is kind of crazy. But like Yangshu, that's income from industry and income from peasantry. We've got income from industry and income from commerce. Income from commerce and income from industry. So this one would be the best one, Nanyang. We put that guy there. We could stimulate or surplus markets. We'll do that. Okay. We could do re reward the filial and incorrupt at a place which has a high amount of corruption. So like Lang Ye. That would give us an extra what? 700 income? I'm not entirely sure how that's corruption, how corruption works now though. Which is kind of weird. Right, we'll put it there anyway. The satisfaction will be really useful anyway. But um, yeah, I'm not sure how that that's how corruption works now. Let me just hover over this. Is there any way for us to treasury? Oh, we can put the tax level. Is that up? Extra food from farming. Extra tax rate. That's not a half bad idea. Whacking the tr the uh, tax up. And think about that. If we can sort out public order and have it on like plus 10 or whatever in a lot of provinces, then that would be a decent idea. That would be a very decent idea. Right, I'm just going to rush that. What's uh, causing negative factors here? Buildings, but there's plus 12 from buildings. So is that the buildings are causing more upset than they are? Yeah, it's because we have both the Borough of Trading Associations and the Artisans Workshop. So I'm going to have to make this one like a noble support one, which I guess it kind of already is. What else could go here though? We've already got the inn, we've got the marketplace, we've got the private workshop, state workshop. Uh, can't fit in a government support. Grain storage can do that. 
that doesn't give public order. Uh, this one doesn't either. Neither do those. And none of those do. I find it interesting how like the military buildings don't give any public order. Well, that's extra jurisdiction. And those definitely don't give extra public order. Alright, um... Yeah, maybe we just upgrade this, right? So you have public order and the food. I mean, it's not necessarily a bad idea. Um... And then we get the happiness, and then we can bump up the tax. Like, that's probably the best way to do it. There's gonna be a few other places that are similar to that. We are upgrading the tea parlor here, though, so this one's gonna... level out. I don't think it shows like positive and negative of buildings, it just shows the overall effect of buildings. So we'll just upgrade this quick. That's going to go to plus three. If we upgrade it again, it goes to plus five. If we go again, it goes to plus seven. So yeah, we could drop six public order quite easy. Okay. Um, that drops food again. I mean, we can do that. Make that an imperial city. That's not even too bad. <laughs> 78 food still. <laughs> Why did we just build this? Like that that's a maxed out commandery. It's just straight up done. Like <laughs> it's ridiculous. There's like nothing more we can do here. Three thousand eight hundred that makes. <laughs> the gross income is 5.6k, but we lose 28% to corruption. I'm not sure if that goes down like a flat 20% when we when we get rid of the spiritual alignment debuff. But if it does, then we're going to be making like 5k in that province. Crazy. Right, anyway, uh, we'll move on to the next turn. Let's go. That was me saying I wasn't going to spend all my money upgrading the buildings, and then I go ahead and do it anyway. <laughs> but we still got loads of money. It's like, money just means nothing to us right now. I could probably buy vassals. I wonder if I could buy some Ajai as a vassal. Or anyone, for that matter. It might be worth a try. Taoist alchemy is complete. Through mastery of the alchemical arts and the focusing of the spirit, we may discover the path to enlightenment and thus immortality. Such is the way of Taoist alchemy, which seeks to harmonize the physical and the spiritual to unlock the way of or to awakening. Okay, cool. Um, our next reform, we're going straight towards uh, Buddhist philosophy. Uh, that's fine. And then we'll get the plus five satisfaction and the extra income from all sources. Just having a quick look at these other options that we have. The extra campaign map movement range there is really nice, but we'd have to go through these ones, which we'd, I don't really need. Minus 10% retinue upkeep is not bad. Like all of those aren't even too bad at all. That's only going to take, what, three, four, and then an extra five turns there. It was like 12 turns to get to that. Um, campaign movement range is really useful at this stage in the game where we're moving our armies about a lot. I'm really not a fan of redeployment cost. I kind of feel like it's a bit useless. Like obviously if you stack it, it's it's probably pretty nice. You can just have an army disband and then bring it up somewhere else. But for us, where we're kind of running around in vassal lands, it's pretty useless. Couple nice traits again. All right, well, <laughs> back to building. Uh, we can push this one up, but I'm not sure that I should. I still minus three on the public order there. Do I just remove this one and replace it? That's minus noble support, that's increase in noble support. And we got that one's minus 16 in noble support. We demolish that and then build 
What else can we build? The sc oh, schools do. Okay, schools give extra noble support as well. Eh, saying that... It's not much. <laughs> it's not much uh, noble support at all. If it was more, I would make them actually really nice, but... I'm not a fan. This is so much more. That goes up to 10. Also, the extra food is not even bad because it allows us to sort of build these imperial cities. And it's not like it gives us no income. So let's just build that up quick. Boom. Um, that's going to give us some extra food. And we can do that. That takes us to 69 food. A. Alright, that's going to help out a little bit anyway with the five production from farming. There's also going to be a little bit more because we get buffs from the technology tree. So i to bear that in mind as well. Okay, not bad. Up to 3,500, we get 888 from peasantry. We do get buffs to our peasantry income faction wide as well. That's also plus seven now, which is good. All right, let's just uh, build this up. Bar. This is plus 16 at the moment. All right, we'll just uh, make that go down by building up the trade port. Uh, let's build up that. Uh, the grain storage is all very well, but we're just going to demolish that. This is food, right? We've got the craftsman workshop, the income from commerce, because that, that give any commerce income? No, it doesn't. I'm probably just going to put the judiciary there. Reason being, it obviously gives us more income from the tributaries, especially when we max it out, plus 15% is pretty big. Right there, we'll put that up. I am going to start boosting food quite a bit by building these food buildings. Just because that way we can max out our settlements. So that's pretty important. Okay. Back to our armies. Uh, we can hit Chengsha. Do we do so this turn? We could attack Samai. Uh, let's just go into diplomacy and uh, see who he is friends with still. We're still allied with Song Wei. I don't know if he'd join the Alliance War against Jin Empire. Uh, let's actually talk to Song Wei first. Curious. West cooperation. Not gonna work. <laughs> Alright, let's go to quick deal and do request or seek cooperation. None of these I can offer the deal, it would be way too little. Alright, that's kind of annoying. I was hoping I might be able to like offer something for money, but not going to happen. Okay, so do we attack some eye? <laughs> um, I think maybe we wait like a, another turn or two. Maybe one more turn, because I would like to be able to t take this lumber yard, and I want to be able to take this settlement. Although we're basically there, so that's good. Yeah, we're, we're right here, which is nice. Uh, actually, do I take that settlement first? I'm, I don't have any. The worst thing about taking that settlement is I don't have anyone I can give it to yet, because I would have to take the other settlements over here before I could actually hand them out to my vassals. And I don't want to control more settlements than is my domain. So, yeah, we're in a bit of a weird spot right now. Oh, well, um, that's all good. It looks like most people are happy with us now. For the most part. I don't really care about Sima Wei. Because he's going to be the next person I annex, most likely. And then we'll share his land out between Xu Yan, Zheng, Zheng Li, and Pu Yang Wanxi. I guess I could do that now. Why do I. Why am I waiting for that? 
Like, my vassals aren't liking me at the moment. Uh, can I just hover over this? Like, Alright, okay. So, annex the vassals minus 23. I wonder if that's capped. Or if it can go higher than that. If it caps out like 50 or something, then that'll be fine. If it goes beyond that, then there's going to be a lot of people who don't like us. Tell you what, best way to find out is just do it. We thought you dead. Yo, what up, dude? I'm going to annex you. I think it's just minus 50 across the board, right? That's what it looks like. Uh, Semi away, doesn't matter. Everybody else would be fine except for Ruan Shen. There's some that would go like below zero, but not too far. I mean, I'm trying to get my reliability rating up. <laughs> Maybe we don't do it yet. I think I could just spoil my reliability rating at the end of the game. We can do, we can do it later. <laughs> For doing it now is very risky because I may have to deal with a lot of like vassals breaking off before the end which I really don't want to have to deal with so here we are anyway um, this guy do you want to make him good for the army or good for himself oh the melee armor piercing damage for own army is not too bad then again we do have four units of archers the so ranged armor piercing damage would be quite nice but don't think these guys have too much ranged armor piercing damage they're all yeah, it's all like base damage. I guess crossbows are like ranged armor piercing, but no, we'll go for the zeal. That's fine. Let's just do that. That makes him and his retinue better. Oh, these guys I might just keep on land while we wait the extra turn. So that we can just replenish this Imperial Guard. And this guy's staying where it is. Alright, on to the next turn, I guess. I was so close to vassalizing some away then. <laughs> I was tempted to just do it anyway. Because I could, right? It's not like anything, anything could stop me. But if I was then going to hand out all of the provinces to people... I don't know, maybe they'd like me enough that they wouldn't rebel. I don't know. So my dad is requesting that we join both Kai War and Songwei. Actually, your choice. Yeah, I think there's like a few turns more, right? I guess we'll check it. We can check it this turn. Ooh, time for a change. A decree from the emperor himself has put you in jeopardy. Whilst you are sure he's been manipulated into such a decision, you unfortunately have to make a choice on how to proceed. Things could get ugly. So we can accept the consequences, kill him or retire him. I mean, we could kill him. But we're just going to accept the consequences because I want the spiritual alignment. And I want it now. It's only going to be five turns of uh, minus ten diplomatic attitudes, so that's fine. Cool. Uh, so now we've lost the extra corruption. It's fantastic. Our food's gone up as well, I think, because we've maxed that out. Right, a good year. Uh, we may as well go towards the military, right? Well, that's wealth, actually. Wealth alignment. We don't have any wealth alignment yet. Sure, why not? Okay. Let's uh, boost that up. I'm just going to boost it. And uh, we'll start building that. It's going to take a little while. Uh, let's see. Is this down to 18? Yeah, I don't think it's like... I think it's like a cumulative. So like... Kind of like income is. With the 250 plus 655%. Corruption is like similar in the way that it works. You're not taking away like a total of 20%. A global amount is like 20% of the corruption that you have. I think that's probably how it works. There's always a little bit of corruption. 
no matter how much corruption reduction you have. By the way, this uh, is still making 4.4k, this uh, big old settlement up here, and this one's making 4k as well. Artful for Ruanxing, that's extra noble support for the administered commandery, that's really nice. Uh, especially considering I'm thinking of whacking up the taxes. So, yeah, good stuff. Right, let's uh, pop that up. Make that. Make that. Make that. <laughs> and uh, I guess we'll just build that up as well. All right. Uh, do I even have the... This is weird. I don't even have the inn. Why do I have the patrol barracks? <laughs> Build the inn. That's definitely missing from this province. Just upgrade it, because why not? And we'll build that. All right, that's going to sort out the uh, noble support there. <laughs> it's plus seven, good. The only one, the one that needs helping out now is Rudan, which is fine. So that's plus 7, plus 17, plus 9, that one's plus 3. The rest of them are plus 7, so I'm pretty sure I could put the taxes up soon. Uh, Lady Shen Jingmin. She probably just wanted to go towards Wisdom, I guess. I guess we could get resourcefulness and composure. I'm going to be better first. Probably. I think composure is probably better to have first. Another person who can replace our strategists if they die. Alright, um, do we attack Sima Ai? Actually, no. We need to check if we want to attack Lu Xing. Can we do it? Oh, we can. All right, this is going to be a battle. Uh, we'll fight it as a night battle, and we shall jump straight in. Is this actually going to remove the reinforcements? Do I want the reinforcements to come in, actually? Hmm, maybe I do. I think I do. Because then I'm very much likely to be able to one-turn piece, so we'll just uh, let them come in. Seems a bit risky, but it's fine. Alright, let's do that. Gai Bian has some, some battle to do here. It's going to be pretty ridiculous. We made it purposefully harder for him. be okay. It'll just be the usual, we just need to be a little bit careful as to where the enemy is coming in. I guess we could actually, oh I know what we can do, why don't we just face and kill them? Like, yeah we just face and kill the reinforcements, right? And then go from there. So, uh, we'll have these guys in of course in the center. Uh, we do have some of these fellas for the flanks. Interesting. Shield wall spear. As opposed to normal turtle. So that's charge reflect as well. Not as much range block chance though. Well, basically no range block chance. <laughs> I guess we could change into that if uh, Cav starts coming towards us, although I don't think they have much Cav. Uh, these guys can just stand here. I do have some yellow dragons, uh, but the rest of the troops can just sit behind along with my trebuchets. Eh, maybe I need to save the trebuchets to take down the walls. Hmm. It may be worth actually having these turn towards the gatehouse. Unless I just like save enough ammunition that I can break down a gatehouse or something. 
Because I can always burn down the towers. That's fine. Alright, um, yeah, we'll do this. Uh, let's turn that to flammable rounds then, and we will start the battle. Am I going to have to move forwards? I thought I'd be in range from here, but I don't think I pushed my troops far enough forwards. Uh, let's just move up. And if we can get my archers into range, then they'll probably have to turn to face us. I can, of course, always move my unit, my uh, leaders over there. Yeah, I think I've uh, maybe messed this up a little bit. Okay. I'm going to have one target the crossbows. Uh, they do actually have some trebuchets. Okay. Uh, we're going to have my leaders go deal with the trebuchets. ASAP. Ooh. Those shots could hit really bad. <laughs> Not good. Especially considering I'm keeping a lot of my units quite concentrated right now. Thankfully, they are missing quite a bit. Damn. I really need to take out those trebuchets ASAP. Doing quite a lot of damage. Ouch. Alright, come on. Take down those men for me. Alright, we managed to carve up their cav here because we, I guess, reflected the charge. Which is good. Uh, my leaders are taking their sweet time taking out the trebuchet, but I mean our archers are wrecking them nonetheless, so I think that's all good. I right, just gotta save enough to take down the walls and then we're good. I should probably also save some ammunition on these on X dragons. I also could have had them all in loose formation, but I have messed this up quite a bit. <laughs> it's fine. It doesn't really matter if we mess it up all that bad. And we're in such a dominating position that, yeah, it doesn't matter. Alright, so save the shots and start picking off this gatehouse over here. All right, so the yellow dragons in there. They can definitely do a number on the uh, G militia. That's good. Might as well move that guy up. Okay, cool. Uh, let's have all these move to the side. And I'm going to have to have a couple of them. Shoot down the towers. All right, let's put these onto that. I'll put them in spread formation, and we'll go take down that tower. We're going to have to take down the tower next to it as well. Yeah, we need to blow open this gatehouse. If we don't manage to, we're climbing over the gate or the, over the walls, and that's really bad. Like, really bad. Oh, they have a trebuchet on the wall as well. I didn't really realize that. Okay. Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> Right, hopefully these guys don't get stuck. We have a mission. A 
Okay, they've got a trebuchet here, and they've got a trebuchet here. Uh, maybe I can burn the trebuchet. They do have some arches on the walls. I'm not sure if I'm going to be in range. I guess the Onyx Dragon should be okay. Just spread those out so they aren't getting wrecked by the uh, trebuchet too much. Right, we're not quite in range with these trebuchets either. Okay, well, those have done their job. Let's uh, bring them back. Maybe we can charge into the back of these G Militia. Uh, all of these may as well just come out of their formations. Uh, I can have that one charge into the back of those. Uh, these two can line up and charge into there and into there. These ones can come on over. Alright, we're burning down that. That's good. Uh, let's go ahead and hit, see if we can hit maybe the trebuchet. I don't think it's really going to matter though, honestly. We have to kill the crew, and I think they're going to use up all their ammunition before we do. Eh, maybe we'll kill the crew in time. With the minus morale, it might happen. Alright, those are charging in soon. Okay, that trebuchet is gone. Take out the other one. Alright, just charging in there. All good. Those guys are surrounded. We'll bring these guys out of turtle now so they can get their melee attack on. Uh, we have taken uh, quite a bit of damage from the initial army because I screwed up the deployment, but uh, it's okay. Uh, bring these back. We don't want to be in range of those archers. I don't even know how they have range. And technically, they're not in range. Uh, I guess that's because of the way the indicator is. Yeah, it's not indicating from the, the range from these guys. It's indicating the range from the guys in the middle. So, kind of awkward. Right, we'll move to the right. And then I'll go for the trebuchet. Alright, are these trebuchets in range yet? <laughs> They're still not in range. I've got to take down this gatehouse. Or well, the fort tower at least. Well, he's taking a lot of damage. Let's focus on uh, killing the commander. And that will probably break the rest of that. Okay, good. These have like an unreasonable amount of morale right now. <laughs> kind of silly. I'm also going to point these away from the infantry so we're not shooting at them when they run away. Getting our flank on again. Okay, they're surrounded. Probably could have done that sooner, maybe with the spear guards, but we're all good. Right, almost taken out the trebuchet there. That's the gate destroyed, which is good. We're trying to take out that tower though. Let's see if we can burn down that tower while we're at it. I could maybe save the shots. I wonder if I can even hit those at the behind. Oh, never mind. We did take down the tower, that's good. Uh, let's grab some more of these onyx dragons. I'm gonna whack them into loose formation. We're gonna go down, burn down this port tower there. Uh, have I set that one alight yet? Not quite. Uh, the archers on the walls are killing my onyx dragons, which is annoying, but it's okay. If we win this battle, it doesn't matter how much 
damage this army takes. As long as I don't lose my generals, I'm all good. Alright. It's fine. Uh, these are wasting their ammunition, as I hope they wouldn't. Alright, let's move over. And uh, with those forces taken care of, chuck these into tunnel formation, move them towards the walls. That's what we're going to do now. Are any of these shots actually going to go over and hit the mark? Oh, that one did. Nice. Oh, and smack bang in the middle. Yeah, it's not too bad. I uh, probably want to stay out of range of those archers if we're going over here. Okay. Uh, let's get my guys back into total formation. These can move up as well. Alright, we'll speed things up. It's going to move on. Right, the settlement's burning. That's a good thing. Hopefully reduce their morale a bit. Gets rid of that barricade. There aren't many towers inside. Alright, that should be burning down. Yep. All good. We're going to use this gate, maybe climb the walls a little bit. Not too much. Yeah, a little bit rusty with this campaign. I have had trouble recording it recently, which is why the episodes have been more intermittent lately. It actually has been crashing on me quite a bit, which is unfortunate, but is what it is. Uh, are these guys not firing now? Okay, we'll do that. They're just not going to fire at them, because that's 100% range block chance, right? Yeah, that's kind of awkward. Hmm... I guess we could use the 35% range block chance of the Imperial Guard. It's kind of a waste, but yeah, I need them to use up their ammunition somehow. Otherwise, uh, we're just going to end up taking loads of damage. I'm actually saying that, maybe we don't need to do that. Maybe we just go to the walls internal formation and then just climb them like right in front of them and then they don't have chance to like stop us really we can just kill them on the walls although it seems as though they're falling back from the walls which is annoying okay uh, the other thing we can do of course is use our archers and stuff to take out their archers uh, that was always my normal strat. So let's maybe do that. Let's see if I can kill archers with my crossbows, first of all. We don't have much ammunition left though, that's the biggest problem with this idea. Also, if they start moving like that, we suddenly start doing no damage at all. And don't ask what my crossbows are doing. Excuse me. Do you mind? Alright, whatever. Let's just climb these walls. Alright, what I'm going to do is we're going to hit the Archer Militia whilst they fire at our units. Because that's the only way that they're going to stop and just take the damage. Right, let's have all this slot start coming over. I can maybe move these into range. Not sure. We'll see.
Damn, my spear guard there is taking quite a bit of arrow fire. Thankfully they have sort of inherent range block chance due to the shields. Myonix dragons are doing a decent job against their archer militia, so that's also good. Uh, looks like my crossbows are getting some shots on. Is good. Alright, did we even end up attacking anything on the wall? Uh, we did here. The infantry captain. Probably attack those archers. Let's move these up as well. They can also help take on enemy archers. <laughs> Those archers took a lot of damage. Uh, these ones probably should move forwards. Maybe I can hit these ones, although they're almost out of ammunition. Yeah, they are out of ammunition. Okay. Well, that's fine. We can probably still target the archers. Those ones are running. I need my leaders to get in here. On chaps. Move you up. Here they come. I'm tempted to dismount them. Because there are quite a lot of spears here. But at the same time, they are doing a lot of damage. This guy took a lot of damage charging in there, I think. <laughs> guy Bjorn's done a lot. He's getting plenty of kills going. He's killing so many with each like swipe of his axe. Just like massive cleave damage. Alright, surely this is gonna be like a chain route soon. Maybe not. Interesting. I'm going to need some spears to help out with these horses. Get the rest of our units inside. And he can kill a lot of these quite quickly, but... He's going to take a lot of damage in the process. Every swing of the axe, taking out plenty of units. Another 35, there's a couple more gone. Another couple. Another couple. I guess if he keeps up at that rate, he's going to do very well. Alright, well, <laughs> I'll take it, I guess. Gonna have to break through this barricade, I think. Otherwise, I'm not gonna get to the center. Alright, let's just have everything go and attack the barricade just to get rid of that. Uh, bring those inside. I'll probably turn on fire at will so they can just target units that have recovered. Alright, Mounted Lance Militia, take care of those. Okay, job done. 
Blimey, made a work, made uh, work out of that one, didn't I? <laughs> wow. That definitely could have been played a lot better. I could have used loose formation better. I could have moved my army closer to the spawn. <laughs> it was like lazily played, but job done. <laughs> we did what we need to. Okay, find the settlement. Now we go and say hi to Songwei. And we'd be like, yo, what up, my Let dude? Would you like peace? Would you want to be my vassal? He's like, no, bro. Why would I want to do that? And I'd be like, bro, I'll give you back your territory. And then he'll be like, yeah, sure, man. And then we just top it off with money because we've got loads of money. There you go. It doesn't even need that much money to be convinced. Oh wait, is there a cap on it? Hello? Oh no, they put a cap on it. <laughs> Make a regular payment. How much would we need to pay him a month? There you go. Cooperation. Boom. So it has agreed. And we need to mediate peace. Great. And we have ourselves another vassal. Fantastic. He needs to level up. Uh, we need to go reach. Perfect. And this chap uh, can probably go towards diligence. I think diligence is better. Or we could go for precision. Hmm. Now nah, we'll go to diligence, I think. That just gives the extra melee evasion. Although I think that's been debuffed from the last time I saw. But we can give him some armor as well. Better armor at least. Oh, I do need to swap out some of these weapons. Didn't we want to give that to him? So, Maju, well, well done. You get the ancient silver sword. We'll do that whilst we remember. <laughs> okay. Well, that's it. Unfortunately, guys, it's been my time. Not the most perfect episode in the world, but... Well, in terms of the battle. Uh, but uh, in general, we've done well. Uh, we got some way as a vassal now. Um, that gives us someone else to give land to. Uh, we'll probably give him the Lujang Lumberyard if we ever take it off the Jin Empire. Um, so it looks like next time around we're going to be attacking Sima Ai. And then after that we're going to be attacking Sima Chai. And then we're going to be giving the land out to all of our vassals as we go. Alright, well, hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.